Tonight is March the 18th, 2020, and I thought I would make a uh, probably a fairly lengthy video tonight. I may not get it all done tonight, but I'll try. On uh, some audio amplifiers, I have uh, neglected my audio uh, subscribers for much too long now with my amateur radio, which I'm still having quite a love affair with. But this is an amplifier that I built some time ago, and I think I made seven videos on it. I wanted to document pretty much the whole process. But one of the things, uh, one of the objectives, prime objective when I built this amplifier, and as crazy as it may seem, a lot of the objectives from my amplifiers is I love to test output transformers. You know, I have uh, used... Uh, the good methods and, and made videos on them of how to measure the inductance of them uh, by many different methods and I, I just absolutely love this stuff but one of the things I did with this amplifier and, and there's it's kind of a story to it here like I say besides uh, um, just want to test a transformer is I did not put in any kind of uh, cathode current balancing circuits or any kind of uh, uh, drive circuit balancing at all it's just these these two cathodes are connected together with a with a cathode resistor and a bypass capacitor same here it uses cathode bias and not fixed bias so but I've, I've learned to really appreciate it it sounds kind of funny you know if you really want to build high-end amplifiers you just almost always use fixed bias fixed bias you know is uses a bias supply that's adjustable so that you can uh, adjust them separately but I use fixed resistors I use a cathode resistor in this side a cathode resistor in this side well tonight what we're going to do is make some measurements the thing will do actually quite a, quite a bit of power there's been a lot of discussions about it this transformer is a minimum size for it, it gets really quite hot but it does a good job so a lot of these older transformers do get pretty hot it's only a 200 milliamp transformer, and each one of these in, in, in idling draws 50 milliamps. So I'm drawing the 200 milliamps right there, and I think I'm drawing about 35 milliamps here total. The driver uh, 6S and 7s don't draw much current. But I'm running it right at its max. But it's been running quite well, and I've been listening to it, and I just think, it's, I, I think it just sounds absolutely marvelous. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some detailed measurements of how it performs now and we're not going to even we're not trying to get absolute maximum power out of it I've decided I'm going to do it all at 15 watts you know 15 watts even even with inefficient speakers is pretty darn loud if you have speakers that are only 90 dB SPL that's at 1 watt and you put 10 watts into them well then you got 100 dB 100 dB not dBm just dB SPL sound pressure level and 100 uh, dB SPL is actually quite loud. And if you went to 20 watts, that would be 3 dB more, so that would be 103. So we're not able to go to that with a 90 dB speaker. But uh, whatever the point is here, you know, this is not about being the loudest thing on the planet. Uh, I like classical music. I like chamber music. I like violin. I like vocal. And I also like some heavy metal. And even even with this rated at 20 watts, these transformers rated at 20 watts, and running it considerably low below that, it it's got a heck of a lot of punch to it. Quite surprising. Doesn't take the kind of numbers of watts that uh, oftentimes we think it does. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, set the benchmark, if you want to call it that, of this amplifier as it sits. I'll, I'll show you the schematic. It's just got a nice bottom on it. I'll have to make a lot of separate little videos in the time all together. I'll take the bottom off <clears throat> and show you how I've done that. Uh, I'll do that real time, as a matter of fact. I think I can do it quickly. Uh, it's vented at the bottom. I wish I had drilled some holes uh, in the top of it so some air could flow through it. And I may consider that right now, but at the same time, I don't want to get uh, overly carried away with what's almost cosmetic. I guess that really isn't cosmetic to have some airflow, but uh, here's what it looks like underneath, and see how I put a schematic on it. I drew that with LT Spice, and this is 
as far as I know, accurate. This is a model over here. There's actually not resistors in series with this transformer. This is an LT model, LT spice model of a transformer. But anyway, so what we're going to do, see, it's got a fixed resistor. So we're going to modify this right here so that we can adjust, so that we can balance these um, currents right here. And then I'm probably going to change this one right here to like a 39k with a 20k pot so it'll uh, uh, adjust it right in the middle so that we can have exactly the same drive level on both sides. Unless these two tubes right here are perfectly balanced you're going to have a different uh, different amplitude signal on one grid than the other. But with a pot in there and then lastly uh, one of the things I want to show you here I've got a bunch of books trying not to keep the camera if you look some at some of the older schematics, and I, I love this one right here. This is the uh, Williamson, uh, excuse me, the UTCW20, and we're gonna we're gonna use this uh, this method right here, balancing the currents. This uses a quad of six L6s. If you remember, if you if you're a longtime viewer of mine, you I built this exact amplifier, and it performed just amazingly good with the, uh, the original, uh, genuine uh, as as. Uh, as required uh, UTC transformer. Anyway, magnificent uh, amplifier at 20 watts. But one of the things that you often see in practically every amplifier is they like to put a little RC circuit off of this part right here. Let me get a pencil so I can point it out. They like to put a little, a little RC circuit off of this right here. And I'm sure that's to uh, make it a little bit more stable. But this one doesn't. Uh, here's an example of what they do. It's that little circuit right there. It's that little RC circuit, 4.7K and 420 picofarads. Well, just about every amplifier has a different value there, and this is virtually off the ground because it's it's getting its uh, signal ground through this capacitor. I also might mention while it's on my mind is in a video I posted not too long ago, I discussed this capacitor and its real value, and they call it a decoupling capacitor because this capacitor right here makes sure that this uh, point right here is at ground so that the only so that this is the plate load resistor otherwise if this capacitor wasn't here this one would be in series with it well a good friend of mine and, and a very uh, astute engineer pointed out to me that um, this this capacitor right here is going to have a much higher reactance value at low frequencies than it does at high frequencies so as the frequencies go lower and lower like down to 20 hertz say this this resistor is going to be more and more in this circuit and he's right I see that now as the frequencies go higher above just probably a few hundred hertz uh, this capacitor is going to be so effective at grounding everything it's it's the capacitive reactions is going to be so low that this this resistor is not in the signal path it's in the DC path it's putting the right DC value here but you have to have this one to to decouple these two resistors right here otherwise this resistor and this resistor would be part of the load hope that makes sense anyway I had to mention that and as he pointed that out I thought that was uh, that was very observant okay so uh, first thing we're going to do is do some scans of it make some notes we'll do it all at 15 watts 20 to 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz and you'll see how it performs. Lastly, before I uh, put all this way and start, we're going to, uh, for output tubes, we're going to use 5881s. These are all new good tubes. They're not like 100% brand new, just bought them yesterday. But they're real, real genuine new tubes. I've had them a little while. Same with the 6SN7s. And then we're going to use 5881 the performance with the 5881s to these gorgeous gold line KT66 has got a pair of them. They're they're new too. These are all new new bought tubes. They've got a few hours on them. Very little though. So there you go. Uh, and we'll see which ones uh, perform the best. So let me uh, let me get started here. Okay. Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to set I guess I'll call it a benchmark of uh, what we're going to be measuring everything against. I've got the uh, 5881s in there, as you can see. 
tongue saw 6SN7s. Here, I'll show you something. One of the things I do when I uh, measure my tubes, see how this one's got 96 and 96? Uh, that's the uh, what I get reading from, even though it, I, it could differ from other people's tube tester, it does indicate that they are balanced. And I always put the uh, the balanced ones as best I can. See, this one is uh, 87 and 90, so that's very close. I put the, them as as the driver to the tube. This is the two input stages, and this is the driver. So I always try to put the balanced ones driving, and this one is driving these two tubes. These are the input for this channel, this input for that channel. Okay, on the back, let's look at the back quickly. I mean, nothing spectacular, but I do have um, variable pots in there for the uh, for the feedback. If you can see what I'm talking about here. The camera usually does a pretty good job. I don't have to zoom in too much. 4, 8, 16. I'll put my little signs on there. Uh, I always I recommend these things all together. And I harvest these things off of other pieces of equipment. When you when you use these kind of plugs, that means you can unplug it and move it around with that thing dangling all over it. Really good idea. A simple on off switch back here. It's off now. So we're gonna plug it in, let it warm up a few minutes, and then what we're going to do, let me see if I can turn the camera here, is we're going to be using the magnificent HP 8903 is seen up here. We're going to be using the program by a good gentleman named Pete Millet. I've made several videos on this years ago. This is a this is the HP 8903A audio analyzer. Really good piece of equipment to have. And uh, the software is going to be running and displayed on this one right here. We're going to be scanning it at 15 watts and uh, scanning it from 20 to 20 kilohertz and that's what we'll start with. And we'll, as we change things, we will um, be comparing them to this level. We measure the power right there on this uh, Tektronics. This is a DMN 4020. I've got it set up to measure power. I'll show you how this is done. I've had this kind of questions asked. Like you turn it on, and then you press uh, Shift Reference. See how it says power and it says two ohms. Well, you, then you press this until you get to eight. Then you press and hold the range button, and when it beeps, then you go to you want to measure AC because it's on DC right now. You measure AC, and then you press the DB uh, reference until it's see how it says DB. And that's a good, really powerful thing for measuring uh, ha how much uh, uh, negative feedback you're putting into it. Press it again, it says, it says PO for power. So this will be our power measurement. Okay, so now I've just got to get it hooked up. And uh, we'll, uh, we're just about ready to fly. Okay. Now, right from the get-go, I see a small problem that I'm going to work on uh, before we really get started. And what it is, let me show you. See, we're seeing 15 watts right here. That's what I've got it set at, which is what I said I'm going to test it all at. And we see our THD is actually quite small. Let's go up there and, and look at it a little closer. Glare. Let me see. I'm sorry. Let's see if that got rid of the glare. Oh yeah, that helped a lot, didn't it? Uh, the glare. I mean, uh, excuse me. The, the THD is actually pretty low. See, it's at 0.279. And you go, well, that's not bad. It's all at a kilohertz, as you see right there. But I see a problem. If I can find the oscilloscope again, right here. And uh, I'm going to work on this first. And what it is, is if this isn't so bright, let me see. I'm sorry, I'm in front, but i got to get this down to where it's not, where you can actually see it. See that right there? If you look at that really close, you can see hum. Yeah. 
that's uh there's not much doubt in my mind that that's coming from the filaments so I'm gonna to have to fix that I want that to be perfect and if I can show you how I'm fixing it I will so I need to do that first okay we're taking a little detour here we're going to uh, see if we can figure out what the problem is why we have uh, the hum that we're seeing on the um, on the output of the uh, the Tektronics uh, distortion meter so what I've done is I've changed things around here well, this changes slowly I've still got it setting at its uh, got things in the way 15 watts uh, I measured that, that that measurement right there was not necessary but anyway there it is so now what we need is a spectrum of it, a spectral display of it. So I've hooked up another PC with, a, with an audio spectrum analyzer on it. Let's take a look at it. Let's get it up close. Okay, start it running. We still see our 0.26% THD, so it shows us that. Here's 60 hertz right here. 60 and here's 120 and here's 180 these are second and third harmonics see here's it is at, at uh, 300 Hertz that would be the fifth harmonic there's hardly any fourth at all but anyway the offending harmonic is 60 Hertz it's right here you can see this is 10 dB per division so even though it's quit running it halts it's a, it's a, at least 15 dB down the 120 Hertz this would be the if this one was a big one at 120 Hertz it would be power supply noise because it's a full wave rectifier but it's 60 Hertz so it's it's AC line mm -hmm. that's our offending uh, issue now we can try the hum balance let's get it running again and let's scope in really close if we can to that 60 hertz and I'll show you what we can do okay all I got to do is make sure it, it keeps running because the program does like to stop and then I'm going to start varying the hum balance and um, here's the hum, hum balance at one extreme and here it is at the other extreme see how it rose a little bit so that helped a little bit but I don't think the filaments I don't see it stop running I, I don't think the filament, the uh, the hum from our filament is the problem. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. It, it'll, it'll run for a minute. Okay, there it there is a, at one extreme, and now I'm turning that pot. See it rise? Oh, about three dB or so. That's ten dB per division. And it, and it's not terrible because uh, it, it's, maybe it's something that we want to work on, maybe it's not. Because you can see it's still down there at 0.26% THD, so how do we approach a problem like this? A 60 hertz hum problem. It's actually, it can be pretty difficult. But I believe we can get it lower than that, and the reason I think we can get it lower than that is because I rarely ever see it on, uh, on, on the Tektronics. Uh, display here. I rarely ever see it. I hope I can get this around here without making it too bad. It's usually uh, I can make that disappear right there. And when I make that disappear, I'll make that uh, that that spectral display go way down. Let's go back to here. I'm trying to move slowly. Don't want to make anybody dizzy. I believe we can. I can find out what's wrong. I believe we can get this thing down another 20 dB or so. Doesn't look like it's going to lower the THD very much. Still at about 0 0.26, 0 0.27, 0 0.28 percent, whatever, somewhere in that range. Uh, but I would like to get that down. So let's think about it just a little bit and I'm not exactly sure what to do right now now I'm gonna start thinking of the things that I have done 
not too long ago, I replaced, I gotta remember this thing is on, I replaced this, this uh, choke right here. I had a 150 milliamp choke in there, a 7 Henry 150 milliamp choke. But that was too low current, it was getting pretty hot. And uh, by putting this 1 Henry 300 milliamp choke in, actually the performance of the amplifier went up considerably quite a bit better. I was really pleased, so that's why I left it there. But to get rid of that 60 hertz, I'm going to have to scratch my head on that and, and think about it in a minute. Okay, I'm continuing to make measurements and I want to see, I want you to see where I'm going with this and kind of why I'm doing it. Now I'm measuring the signal to noise ratio. And uh, once again, that's uh, what's so valuable about this, uh, this top instrument up here. Uh, I adjust it to where it's still a clean sine wave right before clipping, and I start doing the signal to noise ratio, and you can see it up here at 74 dB. That's not bad. That's not terrible. You're probably not going to uh, really have any objectionable hum from it. So I guess what I'm saying here. I'm not giving up, but at the same time, we have to remember that sometimes when we have these very sensitive instruments, we can be fighting something that looks big, but it's actually quite small. So the amount of trouble that it's causing us with our THD down at 0.25 or so percent, and our signal to noise ratio being 74 dB, I mean 90 is like our goal, but I've learned over ex from experience that anything that's in the 70s, 74, 75, 76 percent, or, or dB, I'm sorry, I keep saying percent, whatever I'm trying to say, a signal to noise ratio of 75 dB is actually not bad at all. You're not going to be hearing any hum out of your speakers, even high efficiency speakers. So we're working on something that's actually pretty small, even though it looks really big over here on the um, on the spectral display you know with a um, I have to start putting this in perspective this one right here is just a little bit above minus 10 so let's call it minus 10 to, to we can estimate estimate and this one is just a little bit below 60 so if this one was exactly at minus 10, this one would probably be at about minus 65. So the difference there is minus 55. So our 60 hertz hum is, is 55 dB below our signal level. 55 dB is a ratio of 10 to the 5.5 power. 10 to the 5, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 5th power is 100,000, 10 to the 6th power is a million. So 60 dB down is by a factor of a million. So it's about 55 dB down. So it's well over 100,000. I can't do 5 dB in my head. I can do 10 dB in my head, and I can do increments of 3 dB in my head. But 5, I'd just be having to guess at it. But anyway, you see my point. It's, it's, it's actually quite small. When you, when you have a logarithmic scale like this, this number and this number, see like the second harmonic here, this is at minus 80, and this is at minus 10. So that's 70 dB down. That's 10 to the seventh power. That's a factor of 10 million to one. So the, so the second harmonic is by a power factor of one ten millionth of the, of the, uh, the power of the uh, fundamental frequency. I don't mean to uh, digress here too much, but I'm thinking, how am I going to approach this, or should I? Uh, I'll have to think about this for the night. Maybe I should start this again tomorrow. Okay, I said I was going to quit, but I'm not because actually I see this is probably the best I can do. Let me show you here, and then we'll move on. Okay, I got no signal going in. If I run the hum pot to one side, see it rise. I'm looking just at uh, this one right here. And if I go to the other side, 
but if I start trimming it and watching it slowly I'll actually see it it takes a dip about yeah you know, see no I went past it about right there and that's about as low as it gets and then when I turn this thing back around to uh, the hum balance pot I see it is actually if you can see the uh, yellow uh, I didn't zoom in too far which I think I did come on David you can do this yeah you can see where I'm, I've marked it before with uh, yellow fingernail polish well that's as low as it's going to get so is this a problem well I'd like for it to be at minus 90 but you know what I don't get everything at minus 90 and I think there's something to be learned from this you know we, we got to be careful that we don't obsess on something to the point that we really can't make it any better so why do we have a minus 74 DB signal to noise ratio instead of a minus 90 well, I don't know. It could be a lot of things. It could be uh, the the uh, the fact that the <clears throat> sitting down here. It could be the fact that uh, the transformer is picking up some hum. The output transformer is picking up some hum from the power transformer, or the power transformer is inducing some hum into the tubes. It could be so many things. It could be my grounding scheme in there is less than perfect. But the point is, it's time to move on. Because we really can't make it any better. We know we got 74 dB signal to noise ratio. We got, know we got 0.25% THD. So that's as good as it's going to get. And we don't uh, waste our time trying to fix something that's I'm going to say basically not fixable at this point. Okay, so what is the next measurement in setting our benchmark? We're going to be using the uh, the HP uh, 8903 again. I've got it run up to, as you can see, 15 watts. A little bit over, 15 and a half watts. Here's our display. There's our little bit of home that we see on it. As little as we can get it, as small as we can get it. It's okay. We're going to live with it. And what we're going to do now is scan it. We're going to scan it from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at the 15 watts. So what I've got set up here, this is uh, Pete Millet's program. I've got it set up here and we're going to scan it. And uh, see how it does. I say uh, right here, OK. And you'll see it start over here. Here's a uh, 20 hertz down here at the bottom. There it is. It's just a little bit over 0.3% at 20 hertz. See, there's the 0.5, 1%. Anything below 1%, I think it's pretty darn good. So even with the less than perfect um, uh, 60 hertz hum in there, doing quite well. And we can actually have this one running at the same time. This one's probably going to just give us a bunch of crazy stuff. But you can't see the other PC. But I'll, I'll show I'll show that to you in just a minute. See, we're up to five kilohertz, seven, eight kilohertz, and at twenty kilohertz, it's just below. It's about uh, 0.9 percent THD at uh, twenty kilohertz. Nice and flat out there with a little bit of THD rise at the end. I think we can still call that a hi-fi amp. We should probably do uh, the other channel too, just to, just to make sure that they're both in uh, good operating condition. So let me set it up. Okay, I got the other channel set up now. This is the left channel. And we'll run it and see how it does. So I've got, I've got two programs running at once. Let's let it start and I'll show you how to do this. There we go. About the same. So I can move. Uh, I can move this one. Oops. Can I move this around? Yeah. So I can. Hmm. Well, I can. I guess I can. There it is. See, there's the channel we just ran. 
and I'm running a second version of it in, in here at the other channel. That's how I'm doing that. If we had a, a, adjusted both the same, we could just move it over and run trace two, three, or four. But uh, we want to run them separately. Whoops, we're a little bit off there. Let's get in just a wee bit closer. We can really see what's going on. There you go. See, this one doesn't perform quite as well. It's up at about uh, 0.5, about 0.6%. Oh, that's no, actually a little bit better. About 0.6% out of 20 kilohertz. And the other one is uh, up at about point, uh, let's see, that's five, about 0.95, just a hair below 1%. This one is uh, about 0.65%. But they actually perform quite well. I'm, uh, I'm pleased with that. that. That should sound... Nice, so now I've got to start making some modifications. But we do have it established what what we're working on. We've determined that uh, we probably can't improve signal to noise any better. And we keep moving. By the way, yeah, let me, uh, should, I, should I diverge again here, digress rather, and show you what this thing looks like at maybe a kilohertz. Just for the fun of it. Let's um, let's do this. Let's just use the same thing without having to start it all over. I'll start another THD and um, I'll set it up to one volt so everything will be the same. And we'll just look at what the harmonic profile looks at it looks like. Say start. Okay. Now we're back at our 50 watts, and this is what it looks like. There we go. Actually quite nice. Let's talk about it just a little bit. This is fundamental. Second harmonic, third harmonic. Second harmonic is down quite a bit. It's down, uh, like we measured a while ago. See the 75 in this case and it's 10, so it's down 65 dB. Here's our 60 Hertz. That's our line frequency home. We don't want any of that. We want that down here. And I've seen it down there, and sometimes can get it down there. This is 120 hertz. That's our uh, power supply noise. There's the second harmonic of the power supply noise, and so on. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. That looks pretty good. That's the way a, uh, a vacuum tube, a vacuum tube amplifier looks like because our our THD at a kilohertz is 0.22. See, there's our one kilohertz. There's our fundamental. Got some spurs on the both sides, but that may be uh, artifacts of the uh, of this little FFT program. So that's the harmonic profile of a of a decently working uh, push-pull audio amplifier. Now, if this were a single-ended amplifier, it would look very different. You'd have the fundamental here. You'd, the second harmonic would be up here. The third would be here, the fourth would be here, the fifth would sixth, seventh, eighth, and it would it would just be practically a straight line, but it'd be some little curve to it in here. That's what a SE amplifier would look like. The second, third, fourth, fifth would, would be almost a straight line in descending order. So you know it's gonna have a different sound. And you may like it. That's just it. I think we really do like uh, that type of a harmonic profile in the creation of music. However, uh, I'm not sure. It seems like we shouldn't like it in our playback instrument, but uh, maybe we do. <laughs> if we didn't like the harmonic profile of a vacuum tube amplifier, they would have vanished about 70 years ago, or maybe not quite that long, at least 50 years ago when transistor stuff come, uh, come out. But uh, vacuum tube amplifiers distort very differently from uh, transistor amplifiers, and I think that's why we like it. They, they tend to round off, uh, especially at the clipping level. When they start clipping, they, uh, they clip a lot uh, softer, smoother, more round than the, um, uh, the solid-state amplifiers, and that's, uh, I'm certain that's why they are still around and we love them so much. So. I think it is time for me to take a break, and I've got some serious modifications to make to it, 
and we'll start on it um, again tomorrow. Well, I said uh, maybe start tomorrow, but I think right now is the right, is the right time to compare the 5881s to the uh, these beautiful Gold Line KT 66s because uh, everything's at the same temperature. You know, it's it's kind of hard to make everything exactly the same between two days. So we're going to uh, do a couple of scans of that on each one on each channel and uh, compare it. So, so we'll have all the data in front of us at one time, and then we'll take a break. Okay, just like that, and it's had a few minutes to warm up. I think those uh, KT-66s sure are pretty. So let's whirl back around here. Nothing has been changed. I've changed... Uh, I haven't changed the volume control. The, I haven't changed anything. All I, I, I did close that third program where we just had a, a static condition of one kilohertz. And if you remember, this one is the uh, I believe was the, uh, uh, the the left channel, and this one was the right channel. Yeah, this was the first one, so it was the right channel. And then we ran this one, which is the left channel. So now we're back to the right channel. So this one. So what we're going to do is start another THD. We're going to set it up the same. I set it up to five points. Don't want to make it too many because then it just gets real long. And I set the generator level up to one. And then we say start. And then we look again. It says, is the reference level okay? You have to look around at uh, this right here and see our 15.31 watts. We say, yep, there's our 15 watts. And then we come back around to this one. And uh, hit. Okay. And let's see how it does. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. So we get the best picture we can. Actually, it looks like it's better already. Look at our THD there. It's down 0.1 percent. Doesn't look like our 60 hertz was hurting us very much, does it? But it sure is easy to take off on, on, a, on a tangent there and, and get obsessed with it to the point of uh, no gain. So we have to be careful. Oh yeah, that one. That's that's actually quite a bit better. And by the way, I am not controlling the input line voltage. I usually do that, but I didn't do it this time. Okay, well, let's, let's see if we can remember. This is the right channel, and our uh, THD uh, is down here at the 0.1% level for most of it. It's up at about 0 .3. 1, 2, 3, 3. No, it's about 0.25. Let me see. Okay, that's what we're running now. Then the other right channel. Well, here it is, right there. See, it was up about 0.35, and THD out here, 20 kilohertz, was about 0.95. Oops. So it's better. Yeah, the KT66 did a better job. Now, can you hear that better? I don't know, but we can measure it, can't we? It is better. It is actually better. Sorry. Yeah, I have to zoom out just a little bit because I don't want to lose everything. It's hard to do all this at once, but I hope you can see that. Yeah, see this is point uh, six with the 5881s. It was about a little over point nine. Started at 20 hertz at about point um, three five, and 20 hertz on this one it started out at uh, point two five. So it's a wee bit better. Mm-hmm. Same channel, nothing changed, nothing at all except unplugging one tube and plugging in another. You might ask about the bias. Well, the bias is uh, is cathode bias, so it's got a fixed resistor in there, so I didn't have to change any of that. Well, that's what it is. Is it worth running the other channel before uh, quitting for the night? Maybe so. Let's do it just because we can. I guess I could have left the... Uh, camera running. To move to the other channel all I have to do is this. I have to move the camera around here. So I just move the uh, input from 
one to the other. I'm not adjusting these at all. And then I go up here to my dummy loads. Up here. And flip this switch right here from right channel to left channel. That's what it boils down to. And then, gotta, sorry about having to move the camera, but that's, that's the way it is. And then we come back over here and we're gonna start another, another version of this. So we're gonna have four all together. We go over here to THD, over here, start a fourth one, make it the same. Make that uh, five points per decade and make this uh, one volt and then we say start. Comes up and it says is our reference level okay? So then we glance back over here at this and we see that it's 15.88 watts. I think it's a wee bit higher than the other set of tubes. And then we come back. And we see everything is in order, and we say, okay. And we let that channel run. Okay, well, this is nice that this one is set up. Look at there. This was the uh, right channel, this is the left channel. Started out at 0.25, that one's starting out at uh, just a little over 0.3, not quite 0.35. But once it gets past, let's see, this is 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hertz. Once it gets past, you know, whatever, 100 hertz, it's down there at 0.1%. At 15.87 watts. No use me swinging it around there. So it's nice that uh, those two uh, aligned just like that. Wow, that's like a carbon copy of it, isn't it? This one smacked right out like 0.6, same thing. It's THD with 0.1, not not a whole 0.1 percent higher at the uh, at the low end of 20 hertz. I'm telling you, it takes a good transformer to do 20 hertz, even at 15 watts. Those Acrosound transformers are darn good. They really are. Okay, well there it is. There's the two uh, KT66 ones, left channel and right channel. Let's move them kind of down out of the way. Let's see if I can do this without doing something really stupid to the computer. And these are the 5881s. I mean, they're not bad. There's nothing wrong with that. But the uh, the KT66s are better. All right, gentlemen, ladies, thank you for watching, and uh, have a good night. Stay safe, and uh, I don't know. Pray for our country and the world that we don't uh, that we get rid of this virus. ASAP.